relatively higher levels of triglycerides are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got all-cause mortality risk plotted against circulating levels of triglycerides on the x. And this study was a meta-analysis of 14 studies that included more than 330,000 people with an average age of 48 years at the baseline visit. In this study, once triglycerides went above 1.69 millimolar or 150 milligrams per deciliter, all-cause mortality risk significantly increased. All right, so what about older than 48 years? And that's what we'll see in this study, which included more than 1.5 million people with an average age of 57 years at the baseline visit. On the x-axis, we've got hazard ratio or all-cause mortality risk plotted against circulating levels of triglycerides on the y. And then when looking at less than 1.7 millimolar, again, or less than 150 milligrams per deciliter, which was defined as the referent, all values above that were significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And we know, we know that that's significant that each of these uh, quintiles is significantly associated with all-cause mortality risk because the 95% confidence interval or 95% CI, the data in parentheses, are completely above one for each of these quintiles. All right, so what about older than 57 years? So this isn't a plot of all-cause mortality risk, but it is uh, the hazard ratio for uh, coronary heart disease mortality. So uh, heart disease mortality risk plotted against circulating levels of triglycerides in milligrams per deciliter on the X. And in this study, which included almost 4.5 million people, and note that all of these studies will be in the video's description, so if you're interested in that, check it out. In this study, once triglycerides got above 80 milligrams per deciliter, and looking at the fully adjusted model, the data in green, model 3, once it got above 80 milligrams per deciliter, we can see that there was a significantly increased uh, coronary heart disease mortality risk. So from these three studies, we can see that relatively higher triglycerides are associated with an increased coronary heart disease and all-cause mortality risk. But note that triglycerides are not a homogeneous metabolite group. When we think about triglycerides, we think of them as basically one big large group, and they're all going in the wrong direction if they're increasing. But individual triglycerides are associated with an increased odds of living to 85 years. And that's what we'll see here. In this plot, it's of longevity against all-cause mortality risk. On the y-axis, we've got the odds, uh, OR being the odds ratio or probability of longevity, which in this study was defined as reaching 85 years. And on the x-axis, we've got the hazard ratio, HR, for all-cause mortality or all-cause mortality risk. So where we want to be on this plot is in the upper left quadrant, as that would be associated with an increased probability of reaching 85 years and a relatively low risk for all-cause mortality. So when looking at the metabolites in that quadrant, upper, upper left, we can see the amino acid serine is there, and that's a story for another day. I'll probably talk about that in, a, in an upcoming homocysteine video. But note that we've got uh, at least one triglyceride, as shown there, C56 colon 8 TAG. So that is a triglyceride, TAG, with 56 carbons and eight double bonds. Now, just to introduce what that even means structurally, this is just the generic structure of a triglyceride uh, metabolite, which includes three fatty acids, triglyceride being three, bound to the glycerol backbone, as shown there. Now, these three fatty acids are all the same in this case, and they each have a double bind, as, as indicated by that slanted uh, line. So this would be the uh, C12 colon one, because each of these fatty acids has 12 carbons and one double bond. And to get how many, uh, fatty acids, uh, the sum of these fatty acids, C12-1 multiplied by 3, since they're all the same, yields the C36-3 triglyceride. So that's just an example. That metabolite, that triglyceride metabolite, is not one that's found in the upper left quadrant, but I just wanted to illustrate what triglyceride structure actually means because we'll see a whole bunch of different triglyceride species coming up in a minute. So it's not just the C56-8 triglyceride that's associated with an increased probability of reaching 85 years. We can see in this plot that there are two others. And not included, but they are amongst those red dots that are in that upper left quadrant, are four others, C54, 9, and then C56 with 6, 7, or 9 double bonds. So from, this, from these data, we can see that there are indeed longevity-associated triglycerides. And I just want to uh, reiterate the point. I'm not saying that we should have high levels of triglycerides, but based on this data, it would suggest that having certain triglyceride species 
being relatively high while keeping total levels of triglycerides relatively low may be a good strategy for reaching at least 85 years. And along those lines, five of these triglycerides that are associated with an increased odds of reaching 85 years can be tracked, which means they can be potentially optimized. And I've been doing that using Iolo's at-home metabolomics kit. If you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me make a whole bunch of videos using this kit. And beyond these uh, metabolites, it includes more than 600, including 241 triglyceride species. And amongst those, 29 are linked with uh, increased odds of reaching 85 years. If you're interested in using the kit, discount link in the video's description. So in terms of those triglycerides that are associated with an increased odds of reaching 85 years, we can see those five that I just mentioned in the earlier slide here. C54-9 and again C56, which has six, seven, eight, or nine double bonds. And we can see that each of these is significantly associated with an increased odds of reaching 85 years as their 95% confidence, confidence interval, again, the data in parentheses, is completely above one for each of these five metabolites. And additionally, the p-value and FDR, or false discovery rate, are each less than 0.05, which highlights they're statistically significant. But it's not just these five metabolites. As I mentioned, there are 29 longevity, or an increased odds of reaching 85 years. Uh, so how do we go from five metabolites to 29? So that's what we'll go through here. So the first one's pretty easy, the C54-9, and note that I had to put an underscore for the uh, C54-9 because if I enter it as a colon, for Excel reads that as, as the date, so I had to put it as an underscore. But for the C54-9 triglyceride, that's easy because there's just one metabolite in Iolo's kit. But for C56-6, we can see that there are eight metabolites that, that fall under that metabolite grouping for C56-6. So let's illustrate how that's possible. So for the first, we can see that the triglyceride 22,4, that's 22 carbons and four double bonds, so that's a polyunsaturated fatty acid bound to the glycerol backbone, in conjunction with two other fatty acids that have a com combined 34 carbons and two double bonds. Moving forward, we can see that all of those eight species are not the same, including the one at the bottom of the list, which has at one position the C16,0, which is a fatty acid that has 16 carbons and no double bonds, so it's a saturated fatty acid. And then at the other two positions, it has the sum of 40 carbons and six double bonds. So in other words, these are many different triglyceride species that fall under the 56-6 triglyceride uh, umbrella. So we can add them together to form the 56-6 as one metabolite. More on that in a minute. So we can see that 56-7 has a bunch of metabolites that fall under that window, C56-8, and then a few for C56-9, which then brings us to what's optimal. So when considering that these triglycerides are significantly associated with an increased probability of reaching 85 years, I think it makes sense to keep these specific triglycerides relatively high if we can. And again, while keeping all triglycerides as a net sum, beyond these five, the whole net sum of triglycerides relatively low. Easier said than, than done, I know, but we'll see how this story plays out in future tests. So I currently have four tests using IOLO's kit. I'm gonna send test number five tomorrow. And for test number three, I did a pretty good job of keeping these triglycerides uh, relatively high. But for test number one, I didn't do a very good job. Now, I haven't started calculating correlations with diet yet. But once I get to five or six tests, I'll start to look at correlations for diet with these quote-unquote longevity-associated triglycerides. And we'll see if maybe I can use diet to keep them relatively high with overall triglycerides relatively low. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, Iolo's kit, epigenetic and telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, NAD quantification, at-home blood testing, which includes APOB, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me a Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, which I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.